Okay, today we're going to um, add to the network that we created, this local area network, with another local area network connected through this router. So, first thing we'll do is go down to the networking devices, switches, click on the first type of switch we have here, and I'll put it over here. Now we're going to connect that switch to the router with a straight through cable that's this black solid cable. We go to the router, gig ethernet 001 to the switch. I'm going to put it in the first gigabit ethernet port. Now that's down because we haven't configured the router yet. And uh, I need to choose another network. You can see that we have the network 192.168.0.1 on this interface. I'm going to move it over here. So I need to um, make a copy of that label and put it over here. I'm going to leave most of the address the same here, and I'm only going to change this third octet. Now, any address that starts with 192 has the first three octets defining the network portion. If you look at the subnet mask for this address, it will be, by default, 255.255.255.0. And the 255s mean that all the bits in that octet, that number, um, are, are network bits. So since I had three sets of 255, that means that the first three numbers, the 196.168, excuse me, the 192.168.0, are all network portion. So any host on this network has to have an address that also starts with 192.168.0. So um, the last number, the one that has a zero in the subnet mask, all the bits in that octet are host bits. And they have to be unique on this network. No two devices on this network can have the same address. So I'm going to change the third octet here so instead of 192.168.0, maybe I'll choose I'll choose a big number. I'll choose 200. Okay, make it look lots different. So this will be 192.168.200.1. That will be the address of the router. The network address will be 192.168.200.0. We don't assign that address to any device. That's what the outside world will look at the whole network is being. Okay, now I've just changed a label. I haven't actually changed the setting on the router. So let's go ahead and do that now. I click on the router and I'm going to go to the uh, gigabit ethernet zero. Oh, I don't remember which one I plugged it into. Oh, yes I do. The zero, zero, zero is connected to this switch. It's already configured, you can see that address. Zero, zero, one is the new one. So I need to put in that address that I put on the label, 192.168.0, oh, I'm sorry, .200.1. The subnet mask will fill in with the default, which I'm just going to accept. We can actually divide this down further, but I'm not going to at this point. I want you to understand what the subnet mask does, not really necessarily know how to calculate um, different subnet masks. But you do that, that you do that when you want to divide the network up into smaller subnets, which is what I call the subnet mask. Okay, so now I've got those um, that value set. I do need to turn this uh, port on or else that will never turn green. Okay, I'm done with that one. Now I'm going to take a few hosts and we click on the end devices icon here. And um, in the toolbar, I'm gonna pick PCs. I'll control click it so I can pop in three PCs up or down here. So these are another LAN. Now it might help if I draw a shape over these um, so that you can really see that they're a different, um, a, a different land. So I'm going to 
click on the palette dialog and I want to change the color. I'll change it to a kind of a light blue. And uh, maybe for this one, I'll choose a rectangle. I'm going to not have it outline on it. Okay. And check the fill color. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a block around this to show everything up here is all one land. Okay. So like I have one building and it has two switches in it and some computers over here and some computers over here and um, that's all one network. Now, I'll probably want to pull this label down a little bit so it doesn't look like it's in that network because it's really down here. And I think what I'll do is I'll change the color here to maybe, um, oh, how about have a red, make it a little bit lighter. Ooh, that's kind of cute. Okay. And I'll draw another shape, and this one maybe I'll do as an ellipse. See if I can make it okay. So this is going to be a different network. I'll see if I can move this a little bit here. There. I move the label down here. Yeah. So now you can see this is one land up here, and maybe I'll go ahead and label that. And we'll call this, um, oh, it's Montpelier. Montpelier has a State Street, right? So State Street office. And uh, I know just about enough about Montpelier to know that it also has um, a Berry Street office. So we'll say that this is off on Berry Street. That. So I've got, maybe I should actually say local area network, and this is the Berry Street local area network. Now, to really be two networks connected by one router, these would have to be adjacent buildings, but um, you get the idea. Okay. So uh, now I need to connect these PCs to the switch. And then I need to configure the PCs. So I'll take straight through cables. I probably should have control clicked with those so that I could do them without having to select them each time. Go from the fast Ethernet port to fast Ethernet ports. Same here. And I'm just going to pick them in sequence. Okay. It doesn't really matter which fast Ethernet port I plug it into in the switch. Most likely you would just plug it into the nearest one that is available. So now what I need to do is to configure these for this network. Now these up here, I started counting 100, 101, 102. I can do that here too. I don't, you know, they can have the same last number because the first three numbers don't match. Yes, they both start with 192.168, and eventually you'll learn why that number is significant. But uh, this one, the third octet is 200, this is zero, so this is a different network, logically a different network. Click on the PC, and then I will go to desktop mode, IP configuration, and I'll give it an IP address. 192.168.200.200. One hundred. Submit mask is okay. I'm gonna actually copy this much of it. Copy this much of it. And that is the first part. So I want to make sure that the default gateway is this address that I put on the router. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot two hundred dot one. The gateway is how I get out of the network. Think of this as being like a a, a pen where I have sheep. And in order for the sheep to get out of the pen, there's only one gate. They have to go through the gateway if they want to get out. Right? They can't just go out the side, they have to go out the gateway. 
That's why we call it that. It's really a C gateway think router. Okay, so that one is done. And this one. Desktop IP. This is going to be 101. And the router is still, whoop, still one. Okay, click out of that field. PC11, desktop, the 102. They don't have to be sequential, but you know, often we do them that way. Because it's easier. We don't actually manually configure computers like this uh, unless there's something special like a server or a printer or something like that. Uh, it's much more common to use something called. DHCP, and eventually we'll show you how to set that up too. DHCP is how your home router is set up so that you don't have to configure your laptop when you go home to a different IP address. Your computer um, gets its IP address from the router. But we haven't configured this router to do that. Okay, so now let me see if I can send some packets. So I'll go to simulation mode, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click show all or none under edit filters, um, but um, pick up where I left off. We were uh, dealing with these filters. Now these are called protocol filters, and what they do is they allow you to track any um, datagrams that match this protocol. So here's an HTTP um, protocol, which is how web pages are transferred. So if I wanted to watch just them, those packets, I could um, turn off everything except HTTP. But what I want to watch are what are called ICMP packets, um, and particularly ping packets. So I'm going to click show all none, and then under edit filters, I'm going to click that, I'm going to check ICMP. Okay? And now I can see that ICMP is the only filter that's listed here. So I'm going to go up here to the toolbar and pick the simple PDU icon. I'm going to try sending a packet from PC9 to PC10. Can I communicate between one computer on the network and another computer on the network? Now I've moved the slider all the way up to speed things up, and I'll just click the play button. Goes to switch 3, goes to switch 10, back to switch 3, back to PC9. Now if you try this and it doesn't work the first time, just reset the simulation and try it again. There are some other things that need to go on in the background, and uh, we don't need to talk about those right now, um, but that can cause the first or even the second attempt to fail. Um, but typically your computer will actually try multiple times if it fails, and eventually if it can get through, um, it has a better chance of it. All right, so I'm going to reset the simulation. I'm going to set another one now, another packet, from PC10 to the router. So I'll go to the router and come back. You see that both packets go to the switch, and the brown one does come back to PC10. So both of them are delivered correctly. All right, now I'm going to do one more. Set the simulation. And this one I'm going to go from PC11 all the way across the network through both switches to PC3 on the other network. And that's a kind of a almost white or gray packet. So they get to the switch, it goes to the router, goes to switch zero, goes to switch one, goes to PC three, comes back, back to PC eleven. I have a feeling that if I fire this again, that we'll see the second time maybe a little different. Yes, you might have noticed if you were eagle-eyed, the first time the switch sent that packet to all of the computers on this network, and this switch did the same thing. But the second time, it only sent the packet to PC3. And the reason it did that is because switches are smart. When PC3 replied, these switches said, oh, 
there is a packet that came in from PC3 on that port. That must mean that that port is how I get to PC3. So now that they learned where PC3 is, the next time a packet came to them, instead of sending it to all the devices, they said, no, I'm just going to send it on this line because that's the line that goes out to PC3. Now they have, that switch has no way of knowing just how far away that PC3 is, like switch zero, just knows that it sends it on this wire to get to PC3. It's up to switch one to get it on the correct line that goes directly to it. But that's one of the advantages of switches. All right, so again, if this does not work the first time that you do it, that you fire it, just try a couple more times and um, hit reset simulation and try it again and see if it doesn't go eventually. I don't really expect you to be able to troubleshoot it other than to double check your settings. Now you don't have to add all these labels if you want, don't want to, and you don't have to add these colors. Um, you can if you want, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and label these just so that you can see what they are. So this one was 192.168.200.0. Up. And I'm just going to copy that and oops, this is the wrong place. Change this one to 101 and this one to 102. So you can see what addresses that these devices actually have. Okay. And now you've set up really an internet work.